Hello, one and all, I'm Grimple Cheese, and welcome back to Dark Souls, and welcome back to the land of the living. As you can see, we're here in the cathedral, technically it's the land of the undead, but nevertheless, you understand what I mean. Here we are with all these white cloth men, who seem to be worshipping this broken chandelier. I mean, I guess they're a bit addled in the brain, that's kind of what happens if you're left in a cathedral for millennia, but nevertheless, we'll dismiss them for the time being, because... I did something off screen. I did a few things off screen. Like, I grinded a few ears. I literally just started ripping off Birdman ears. Even though the birds don't actually have ears, they have wings. But nevertheless, I took a few of their ears. And the ears are wonderful. We got enough for that miracle for Gwendolyn. So, we got that. And I got a few uh, souls, as you can see. And hopefully that will benefit me in the long run. And also, I think what I might do is maximize my bling potential. What I mean by that is make myself look like I'm made of nothing but bling. Now, the way to do that is by wielding what I'm currently wielding right now, is Ansel's gloves and the boots of the favor. It may not look as fancy as the ever-so-lovely leggings I was wearing before, which happened to be the painting Guardian raced. I mean, just look at that. You see a bit of a cloth. But the thing above me about a cloth is a cloth is a radical different color to my current skirting. I don't like that. I like most well, things are looking kind of the same. So, I could just wear the paladin leggings, mind you. But they just got those ankle guards and nothing more. It's kind of upsetting, really. So, I'm going to go with the boots of the favor. It just seems fitting to me. It may look a bit bronze, but we can say it's just tarnished gold. Even though gold doesn't really tarnish. But yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. So, we got a nice, lovely new figure. Once again, after all, style is everything. And we have all these white men to really well destroy. Luckily, they have not noticed me because they're too busy worshipping their chandelier as I got dived through the painting. I don't know how I dived into a pit and appeared in this other sidely different world. I don't know. But either way, this man must die. Hello, man. Goodbye, man. So, we have a plan. We have a goal of what we must do in this episode. A specific thing, I must add. Let's try and leg it out of it without angering everyone. Well, when I mean without angering everyone, everyone's going to be angered with me, and they're going to chase me into eternity. That's kind of what they do. Like this man here. You're going to throw a knife at me, take a good chunk of my health, but don't worry, you've been just crushed in two. Say goodbye to your nice lovely spy. We have these two men right here, who just don't like me at all. I must dive away in my giant fat roll. It seems like I'm doing a lot, but really I didn't even move half an inch. Now we need to kill that man before he follows me into eternity. These people do not have an aggro radius. I discovered that off screen. It was really, really annoying. Also, there's a dead body there. You have something on you. What do you have? Ah, oh, very nice. I was hoping for your nice, lovely dagger. Oh, maybe you have your dagger. It's a very rare drop, that dagger, but nevertheless, it's one of the fastest one-handed weapons in the game. And it would be nice just to have, well, just to show. After all, this game, well, this playthrough is more like a show-and-tell session, really, while well, showing you everything about this game. So, what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go down this ever-so-lovely, well, staircase once again, and go see Gwendolyn, and give him his ears. He has an ear fetish. Swunken ear fetish that's been doused in vinegar. I guess he just sucks on the ears. Perhaps he loves it vinegar. I don't know. I'm not too keen on vinegar myself, but uh, I'm not going to judge, you know, this godlike figure, what he does with his vinegar ears. I mean, they're blue. Which means they clearly not got any oxygen to him. Uh, this man's a bit weird, a bit screwed in the head, since he has an ear fetish. I know people have feet fetish, I mean, that's a bit strange. But nevertheless, you have this. An ear fetish. And we must give this god, well, what he wants. The ears of Birdmen. Welcome back, Blade of the Dark Moon. If mine power be needs, I shall assist thee. Sadly, we can't have a nice, lovely conversation with the man, but we will just offer some ever-so-lovely souvenirs of reprisal. As you can see, we've got the miracle that I was talking about. The Dark Moon Blade, and we also got a talisman to cast miracles, which is the Dark Moon Talisman. Which is absolutely wonderful. So we no longer need to actually be in this covenant anymore. We can go kill his sister. Well, it's nice talking to you, nice serving you, but I just don't have any more interests for you in general. We should also get a less intrusive shield. It's just covering too much of my glorious appearance. My judgment, like the added golden gloves, looks amazing. 
You can see the pure shininess coming from me. I should really show you the miracle that I got, really. So let's have a look at it, shall we? So we've got a Dark Moon Blade. What does it do exactly? A miracle granted to those bound by the government to Gwendolyn. Lord Gwyn's last born. It boosts the right sword with the rays of the Dark Moon. The power of the rays of the Dark Moon are manifested in vengeance and deeper animus, the more devastating the attack. So basically, it makes your sword magical. It makes it absolutely magical, and it's actually one of the best scalings regarding these uh, weapon enchantments. I think it's even better than the thing that I actually want to get from that ever so lovely individual. So that's something to say in the least. It is very, very good. I don't blame anyone for actually, you know, getting it. And in fact, it's actually worth grinding the ears, since you only need ten ears. I was going to wield this shield for the time being. Why? Well, merely just because I just want to. Now, I could just teleport my way to the ever so wondrous Guinevere, but you know what? No. I'm going to walk there in style. When I mean walk there in style, I'm going to let the world see me, Mr. Fibbles, gold man extraordinaire. Just, well, they're going to let me see them and we're going to waddle up there and see how they're doing. They may choose to attack me, mind you, but I won't judge them for that. They just can't behold my ever so glorious appearance. Not many people can, you see. It's rather a rather sad thing. Now, where does this go? That goes all the way, so I need to run all the way around if it's ever so lovely shield. Now, the reason why I got this golden shield on my back is because it's healing me, and I thought, I don't want to waste a potion on this. Why should I? Well, like, there's many reasons why I should, but I chose not to. I also forgot to actually... I should, well, I mean, I forgot. I mean, I really should actually remove that. Ah, the Dark Moon Talisman. I've actually forgot all about that. So let me just quickly to show you this. A medium for casting miracles of the gods. Granted the Dark Moon Blade, the knight, inherent of the covenant of the Dark Sun, Gwendolyn. The talisman demands a dutiful faith from its owner and has a very high miracle adjustment. It's one of the highest miracle adjustments, I believe. Now, if we just look at it, it has a A in scaling, which is amazing. I think the majority of them have, yeah, if you look at these talismans we've got so far, the talisman and then the fallen talisman, and you've got the Dark Moon talisman. And plus, it's made of silk. I mean, who doesn't love silk? Probably those who are allergic to silk, then I don't blame you. But nevertheless, it's nice. It's a shame that this skull cannot be used to cast magic. It'd be amazing. It's like, behold my lightning! It comes at the eyes of a giant skull in my hand, and I'm holding by its quote-unquote beard. So we have that. I should also remove that and put my ever-so-lovely giant shield on. I've got a lot of shields. I should really deposit a lot of things. I've been saying that for a while, but I really should. Now, the one thing I'm upset about this ever-so-lovely shield in my hand is that it's, well, it's rubbish. It really is. It's a very subpar shield. It could be a lot better. It really could. Now, let's try and run past these ever-so-lovely figures. Oh, let's jump. Oh, that was a reflex jump if I've ever seen one before. Now, what we need to do now is kill a few people. When I mean kill a few people, I mean that we need to kill these individuals here. Why? Because I don't really like these individuals. They're a bit mean. Aren't you? Yes, you are. Whoop! I was hoping to dodge that side. I'm just not that good at dodging. Merely because I'm just encumbered like anything from the amount of gold in my body. Remember, kids, gold is heavy. You sacrifice a lot for style. If you want to look stylish, you've got to pack a lot of muscle on you. Otherwise, you just can't do anything. Ow! Okay, Mr. Man. That really, really hurts. You know what I do when people hurt me? I hurt them back by chopping off your knees. Do you have anything to give me, my ever so lovely man? You do? What do you have? A titanite chunk. Beautiful. I need more of them for my plans. I plan, as I said in the uh, past video, to get every single thing in the game. When I mean every single thing, I mean every single... Well, it's hard to explain. Right? Every single enchanted thing. I don't know how that hit me. These people are very, very dodgy. We need to walk away slowly. Now, one thing you're probably going to learn about these creatures is something very unique about them after we kill Gwendolyn and his sister. But just quickly, we need to kill the one who's not behind a, uh, a fog wall and clearly is a boss in some shape, way, or form guarding something. I mean, you can just presume that it's also equipped this shield so I don't have to use any potions for the time being. And where's the lovely elevator? It's gone up. We just have to wait for it to come down. There we go. Now, why are we killing him, I hear you ask? Well... They're sons of Gwyn. Well, the sons and daughters, I mean. And obviously, they have some sort of, well, Lord so in them. Because Gwyn, you know, he loves his children, aside from the children he disowned. And, well, 
I'm sure they have some sort of god sign in regarding they are gods themselves. They are known for their godlike intent. So obviously they must hold some type of powerful soul within them that can be used to boast the Lord's Vessel just that much more, right? Exactly. There's only one thing we can do. Hello, Grinevere. Don't mind me that I'm pulling out my great bow. Now, where is that lovely thing? Now, where is it? Uh, my great bow. Here it is. Now, Grinevere, you're a lovely woman and all, but you're just not my cup of tea. You know, let's go straight in between the eyes. As you can see, she's dead now. It's truly a saddening thing. Thou that tarnisheth the Godmother's image, I am Gwyndolin. And thy transgression shall not go unpunished. Thou shalt perish in the twilight of Anor Londo. So now we are in dark Anor Londo. It's a lot different since actual Anolonda itself is an illusion. It was an all illusion done by the ever so lovely Gwendolyn. This place fell a very long time ago and it was made to seem beautiful to those who, well, we would seek to be the chosen. They don't want to come to some grim dark place, do they? No, no, no. Now this place is radically different compared to what it was before. And that is no joke neither. So... As I said before, it's a dark place. This is what it really would be like if he didn't give the lovely enchantment of sunlight. Or, well, all over the place. A nice, lovely illusion. After all, the moon does give many, uh, well, illusions. Now, the power of bling should guide me here. The moon should, well, bounce off my ever so lovely armor and blind those that seek to do any harm against me. That is the plan. Now, one thing I'm kind of curious myself, which is a very interesting factor. Is Orstein and Smog an illusion? Because the thing is, we gained souls from the giants, which I'm going to quickly show you, are no longer there. Right? So it does that cast the same for Orstein and Smog, who both had souls, like the giants down there, but it's dark. And why would they be dwelling in a dark place? I, unless they are both hollow, of course. But it wouldn't make sense why they didn't attack the illusion or Guinevere, the giant, even. It just, it's a bit confusing to me, but I don't know. Now, instead of the giant, we have two knights of Gwyndolin, I believe. And these knights are right here. Now, they are both formidable opponents. One a border and one of that black knight place. I forget what it is, but those giant knights. Now, they both want to kill me. Now, I can presume that these are the people who made it here. These are legendary figures that deserve to be cleaved. They have a lot of health. No, 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 no. no. Oh, okay. They do a lot of damage too, especially that man of the giant sword. I should really go naked for this. I really should. This is like a plan, actually. Turns out, I was here the entire time. I don't know why I respawned here, not by somewhere completely different. But I think we should just go on forth and go to Gwendolyn himself. We're going to try and recover our souls. So as you can see, there are literally no giants. All the sentinels were an illusion. So if you didn't get your ever so lovely sentinel shield and sentinel halberd, you're not going to get them now. As I said, just look at this place now. It's so dark and dank and dark. How it should be, really. This is how it really should be. It's not a giant, well, place illusion with sunlight. So, now, every single NPC here that is in Solitaire, Solitaire? Solitaire, is, um, well, hostile towards us. And probably if Solitaire was a pack of cards, he would be very, very, very hostile towards us. Now, along our way to Gwendolyn, we should encounter a nice, lovely friend that we, well, met before. Someone who was guarding a bonfire, I think, if you all remember her. Huh? Well, you should know about what she actually is. And you can see her right there. It's the lady of, I think it's a, of the Darkling? I think that's what she is. But nevertheless, she's a brass lady who looks amazing. 
and we must kill her. And you also should note that the demons, the ones with the sticks and have the pale skin, are also no longer here anymore. The capabilities of an illusion is an amazing thing. So hello, you're hostile. Very. So it was you, was it? Yes, it How was. How dare you produce a blade upon a deity? How did you ever get this far? I shall end your suffering here and now. It is the least that I can do. Yes, it is. So what we're going to do is we're just going to absolute stab you like we've stabbed no one before. Cool, your armor is not that good. Well, it's brass after all. And your sword is also not that good. This man is a threat, Master Gwendolyn. Sadly, we had to kill her merely because of one specific thing. This is one of the reasons why I did it, and it's for this very reason for the Firekeeper's soul. The Firekeeper's soul, now this one should be a unique one. One of the three unique ones, I didn't look at the other one. But if I look down all the way to here, now where is it? Firekeeper, as you can see, you have two. Right here, we have the soul of the Dark Moon Knight, as Firekeeper of Anolondo. A Firekeeper's soul draws humanity and held within their bosoms. Below just a thin layer of skin are swarms of humanity and ripe and squirm. A brass armor serves as a disguise, this ghastly form. So, we have that, and we just have a regular one here. As you can tell, you just, just a generic one. This one is a unique one. So, we got another uh, Firekeeper's soul. Now, I could go get my souls, which is the plan, but to get my souls, I'm gonna have to be naked. Oh, uh, this is not gonna be good. But nevertheless, we're gonna go there nevertheless. And we're gonna need a drink. We're gonna need a stiff drink for this. God. Alright, let's go up these stairs. Now, these creatures are very, very damaging, but we just need a dodge roll potential. We just need to be able to go bump. Even as a bit of a slow roll, actually, isn't it? Is there any way we can improve this? I guess if we remove that, maybe. How about now? Eh, a bit of a slow roll, but it'll do. Yeah, it'll do. So, these creatures here, I think they respawned there to replace the ones that, well, dwelt here before. Now, hello, you lovely individuals, especially you half-clothed man. Oh. Oh, we, we just, okay, we just attracted one of them. That's something I actually wanted to do. So, hello. You should really think about putting some clothes on you. I mean, a pair of trousers to, well, go for your thighs. I can imagine they're a bit cold here now that the warmth of the sun is no longer here. Unless we don't suffer cold. I don't know. So I'm just going to watch what he does and just go, bump. Oh, a parry. Oh, say goodbye to those 30,000 souls. Okay. I forgot they can parry. I don't know how you could parry with that giant shield. Oh wait, it's not a great shield, it's a regular shield. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh. That changes everything. Okay, so we're not going to bother as men. We're instead, we're going to go to straight to Gwendolyn and say hi. After all, we need to put our armor back on. We need to show that we are reasonable and gentlemen. That we are a man of, well, well, fashion. Even though we may have an egg in our hair, that's what placing our actual beautiful flowing locks of brunette hair. We just need to go in there and show that we are Mr. Fibbles. And we are beautiful people, just like the Dark Sun himself, as he does appear to be a bit queer. And that's not even a joke either. After all, he was raised like a daughter as well, I'd like to note that. Even though he was a, a man upon birth, he was raised as a daughter by Gwyn because he wanted someone to be of the moon. Why? I don't know. I don't know if the man's a transgender. I, it's, a, it's actually a strong possibility that he was a transgender, so in a sense, Gwyn just treated him like a woman. It is a high possibility, but in a sense, no one truly knows that you can't really look into, like, examine his body. As the game would probably be rated R instead of 18 plus. Most likely. So, the way to get to Gwendolyn is quite simple. It's just go down those stairs, enter the ever so lovely thing, when I mean thing, I mean the ever so lovely barrier that separates us from him, and we fight him. Now, I have never actually fought him while it's in the twilight like this. Well, reality, I so to say. And it's actually kind of interesting. It's gonna be I don't know if the hall is lit up or if it's also dark. I have no idea, but we wanna go down there nevertheless and just see what it's like. Because we never know what it might turn out to be. It might turn out to be something wonderful, something interesting, something unknown. I should also turn the lever. That would be great, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. It would be an amazing thing, if only I could remember. Sadly, Mr. Fibble's brain is not what it should be. Since the egg is slowly devouring his brain and replacing him with the brain, 
and soon the egg will be Mr. Fibbles. But we don't want to talk about the reality of that. It's like a fate worse than being hollow, I guess. So now that it's spinning and spinning and spinning, we're going to go down these stairs. Now, I would like to say that full damage on a spiral elevator actually is amplified. It's amplified by a, a quite a, a lot, actually, because it's moving downwards as you are falling downwards. So it's compensating for the amount you're falling in game physics terms. So the game slightly gets confused when you jump off a high height with a lot of armor and you're going down in the elevator. It's, yeah, it's something interesting. So as you can see, this place is no longer as radiant as it was once before. Now, as we're fighting the boss, there's two ways you can fight it. I will try to fight it legitimately to begin with, but then I'm going to do my ever so lovely little thing. Now, I want to check if I'm expelled from the Covenant or not. Am I expelled? Yes, I am. You can tell me I'm expelled because the candles are out, and I can no longer talk to the ever so lovely figure in here. So let's go through the white light and talk to Gwendolyn himself. Heretic. First thou offendest the Godmother, and now thou see fit to trample upon the tomb of the Great Lord. I am the Dark Sun, Gwyndolin. Let the atonement for thy felonies commence. So this is Dark Sun Gwyndolin. And I do not like him. At all. I don't know a single person who likes this boss fight. As you can see, it's an illusion of an infinite corridor. Now, this corridor is not actually infinite. It has been designed to where, if you follow him long enough, he will just stop. And you cannot go any further. Now, he does have a multitude of abilities. He has a bow and a lot of magic. He's also a snake man. Luckily, we have a magic-like shield, which is amazing. But the problem with Gwyn... Uh, Glyn here, I was going to say Gwyn... Uh, Benefear, is that he teleports. If you go close to him, he will just teleport. So you need to run up to him and murder him before he actually teleports. Which means you're only going to get one blow on him before he does anything interesting. Which is a bit annoying, to be honest. Oh, I forgot how much that hurts. Now, that blow right there, that ever-so-lovely big ball goes through walls. Now, these little balls do not go through walls. And he will just keep on teleporting. And keep on teleporting. There's nothing to stop him from doing so. Oh, God damn. These, these little moonlight bolts just absolutely destroy you. Now, you can get two things from this boss. I believe you can get his bow, and I believe you can get a, a talisman or a catalyst from him. Oh, God! That hurts a lot. Gwendolyn, you need to stop peering me of your bow. It's a horrible thing, and it hurts a lot. I'm sure you know how it hurts, but still, it's just not very nice, you know. I'm here to just loot your father's tomb, kill you, and you're here to kill me. So as you can see, it's a very annoying boss fight. You need to just sprint up to him and just murder him. Now, there is another way you can fight him. Oh, yes. There's a fun way of fighting him. Now that fun way happens to be... Why am I back here? I don't know. But as you can see, because the bonfire keeper is dead... Well, uh, yeah, it's a bonfire. Yeah, it's the way she's dead. You cannot light it. And in a sense, she's no longer here. And so you can no longer rest at it. But I thought I've rested that bonfire before. I guess that's the curse of the twilight. It's technically no bonfire. Technically it works, but there we go. So I'll meet you right back there. Now, for my plan to work, what I need to do is I need to buy a few great arrows off this ever so lovely huge individual right here. So, hello, giant man. Hello again. Hi. Oh, okay. So, how you doing? Mm -hmm. What's that? Shiny, shiny. Give me that. I make weapons shiny. Oh, you want a crystal ember? I mean, I'm sure you can make shiny weapons anyway. But sure, you can have this crystal ember. And you can make me some crystallized weapons. Why not? I have shiny, shiny. I make weapons shiny. I like you. Me and you can get along perfectly. But I would like to buy a specific bunch of items from you, if you don't mind. Now, that costs 500 each, does it? Now, 
I want a considerable amount of those. Now, how much would that cost in my brain? Brain powers activate! So I should need around perhaps 100,000 souls, or maybe just 50,000, I think. Because I need effectively around 200 to 100 extra arrows in that. I could upgrade my bow, actually. I could. That sounds like the best plan ever, in fact. I might actually do that. But um, what I might do is go off screen to go get those lovely, lovely souls. I may pop a few of my own souls to get that. But uh, nevertheless, I'll be right back. I have decided that I am going to consume majority of my souls for this very, very thing I would like to do. Because I cannot think of anything else I'm actually going to do with these ever so lovely souls. So we're going to solve a great hero here. A uh, great hero of legend who decided to go hollow. So it's out of the best thing that can happen if we consume his soul for the time being. And that's 20,000 souls. So we're kind of a fourth of the way there. So if we just go down and... Well, consume more souls. I mean, the best thing I can do, really, is go into here and do it. Ah, that sounds like the best idea ever. Let's go... Uh, what should we do? We need the Hero Soldier to give me 10,000. We want the Brave Warrior, which give me a thousand odd. So let's see how many souls we get from this, and from that we will judge our basis from there. So, consume that soul, that's 10,000. And this is going to be... Another 10,000, so now at 40,000. And these Brave Warriors can give me 5,000. And this will give me 30,000. Let's consume all of these and just see how many souls we get when we get that many arrows. That sounds like a plan. Now, the reason why I need so many souls for this very situation is because Gwendolyn can be cheaped out in a very specific way. What I mean by that is, if you get a great bow and Hawk's, well, ring that increases bow range, you are able to, well, do damage to him without him actually being aggroed onto you. And what I mean by that is, oh hey, he's at a distance. What you can do is also fight him at a distance. It's a fight of honor, in a sense. So that's how I see it. Fight fire of fire, range of range. So this time, instead of being a magical man of, well, very powerful virtues, I'm not going to be that. No. I'm going to be a someone who basically tries to kill him very, very quickly. Oh, very, very slowly, actually. He's a very slow, painful death, as I slowly shoot his knees out with ever-so-lovely bows. Now, is it worth consuming another soul of the night? No, it's not. It's just worth consuming a lesser soul, actually. So, let me just go find a lesser soul. Uh, let's just do you. Why not? I'm sure you'll give me 600. 800! That'll do. That will definitely do. Now, let's unequip this ever-so-lovely soul to accidentally consume this by accident. And buy 100,000... <laughs> souls mm. worth of arrows! Yes, you can. So I'd like to buy your finest arrows. Give me 100 of them, please. I think it's 200, actually. It's 200. Okay. I would like them, please. Now I'm 242 arrows. Dear God, that's a lot of arrows. So that in itself should do something towards it. Now, for the bow itself, do I need to upgrade a Twinkling Titanite? Yes, I do. And that's 2,000 and it's by itself. Oh. Now, how does it change in stats? Nothing changes, really, aside from eh, a bunch of physical, I guess. Nine more physical. Is it worth doing? Yes, it is. I'll be right back. Uh, well, I won't be right back. I'll just do it in camera, I think. Yeah, why not? So I'll just consume even more souls. Why not? That's where those souls actually put away. I didn't actually think I'd be upgrading it because I thought it'd be, well, out of my price range. Now I have a massive bow. That is amazing. Well, soon to be amazing anyway, so let's just consume all of these souls. Well, let's get myself 9,000, just spend that on upgrading it. Now, modify, no, not modify, I want to, that, yes. Now, should I make a crystallized bow? No, because I'm never going to get this bow ever again. It's a one-time bow, and I don't think I can actually get another great bow unless I decide to do the DLC, which happens to be the prepared to die edition, reason why anyone gets on the computer instead of the actual... Uh, PS3, because I don't think the Great uh, Prepare to Die edition is for the PS3 or Xbox. I don't think so, anyway. So, I do effectively 36 more damage, and I have lots of arrows. Is it worth getting those extra 2,000 souls? Yes. Yes, it is. 
Let's get... Now I'm going to be right back here, don't worry, I'm just going to eat more souls right in front of you. I wonder what the giant's currently thinking of... Well, I'm actually eating a load of souls right in front of him. I have no idea, that's your large soul. No, 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 no dropping. I just want to consume this. Now, is that 800 or more than 800? That's 1,000. Ah, that'll do. I don't mind if I waste a few souls. Yeah, 200 stars I'm wasting there. Uh, I don't mind. I got, like, a load of them anyway. So, let's have a look at this. Now, as I said before, Titanite stuff can only be upgraded to plus 5. Because as you can see, it's no longer there anymore. Now, I'd like to see the scaling on it. Now, what is the scaling on this ever so wondrous bow we have? It's here, and let's go down and go upwards. Now, where is it? Mr. Bow? Here we go. What's your scaling like? Your scaling is still a C. Okay, that'll do. Now, you cannot make them elemental weapons, as, which is actually really saddening. Uh, when I mean uh, elemental weapons, I mean the bow. I can't make it a lightning bow, which would be amazing, or a crystallized bow. It'd be amazing, but sadly, it is, it is not true. You cannot do it. And if anyone tells you any different, they're lying to you in some shape, way, or form. Or they're just trying to eat all your souls. It's one way or another, really. Or trying to get you to farm needless titanite. But I didn't need to farm the titanite. I, I, I did it just by naturally progression by trying to kill C f for three hours straight. Dear God, that was awful. I never recommend, recommend anyone cutting off his tail unless you're a mage. Then you should go straight for it. But you need an implement to cut it. Unless you can find a Velcro seam with your superior intellect. Sadly, Mr. Pebbles is not the most intellectual person around, so he couldn't find a Velcro seam. Mind you, the crystals could just be a crystallized version of Velcro. That would be amazing! Sadly, I don't think that is true. Oh, I, oh yeah, I keep forgetting I need to actually pull the thing and so I can commit suicide. I don't know what commit suicide. What would commit suicide? I guess one of those, um... White-clothed individuals. But I thought I killed all of them. I thought I did, but apparently I did not. So, let's push this lever. Now, am I pushing it the right way? I do not think I am, actually. Nope, I am not pushing it the right way. Nope, I was not. Alright, let's push it this way. This ever so strange device. I wish I had a sign on you saying, well, if you push it clockwise, you push it happy place. If you do it anti-clockwise, it's, well, not so happy place. I wish I had a nice indication. When I mean happy place, I mean you can either go to the Citadel, or the cathedral, or you can go to an unhappy place where Gwyneth is there brooding for the rest of eternity, pretending he's a judge, jury, and executioner. I've got a strange plan for him, because he is not the judge, jury, executioner. That is my job. I must usurp that title, and also become known as a god slayer. For those who actually are actually still alive, because I think every, every single one of my friends have disappeared in their own journeys, and I think they have died in one shape, way, or form. That's my belief anyway. So, if we go into here, I'll show you exactly what you need to do to cheap him out. All it requires is a great bow, a lot of arrows, and in fact, a ring. A ring that is by the giant himself. So it's quite simple. And it isn't, it hasn't been patched to my knowledge. If it has been patched, then yes. Now, can I skip this? Heretic. No, I cannot. Okay. We have to watch for this again, thou sadly. the godmother. And now thou see fit to trample upon the tomb of the great lord. I am the dark sun, Gwyndolin. Yes, you've told me about three times so far. For thy felonies commence. I don't know why you keep thinking that you're a dark sun. I mean, you're not really radiating any light. You're an evil bugger. So, the way this works is he teleports for me, right? So, there's only one thing I can do, and that is to counteract his teleportation powers. How does one do that? Well, one needs to fight him range upon range. That is honestly the best way any human being can actually fight him. Unless you are truly an undead being and gone hollow, then you're just going to charge him endlessly and endlessly and endlessly until the game cannot render any more background or any more corridor. Yes, that's the best way to put it. So, I am using the keyboard for this. For those who do not know of this playthrough, my entire playthrough has been through keyboard times. Now, I want to get a little bit closer to him without actually aggroing him. As you can see, we've got a nice side cleavage of my egg right there. Now, what I want to do is just get in position to shoot him with one of these glorious arrows. Now, how much damage am I going to do to him? That was an absolute whiff. Wonderful. Let's sidestep slightly and just do another ability. Bink! 53, that'll do, that'll do. Now, that will be greatly reduced, I would like to note that. 
it will reduce into a single digit number in the end. Because they actually have programmed this to where they don't want you to do this. They have, because if you're going to cheap out of range, well, they don't want you to do it. They just want you to go up to him, charge into, into him until you can basically stop him from going any backwards. Or any further backwards, I mean. Now, I could just do that. As you can see, the damage has been reduced. I could just charge out of him and just endlessly well, fight him like that. But I do not wish to do that. I do not wish to charge him endlessly because it will take many, many attempts and many, many frustrations and many, many hair pullings. And possibly two toe, uh, toe pullings. I'll, I'll get to pronounce it eventually. I'm starting to think 200 arrows was a, perhaps too many arrows. It's a very strong possibility. As you can see, the damage has decreased to 35 from 56, I think it was. And I think it's only going to get even more reduced. Because the lower you get him, and the more arrows you shoot at him, the stronger he becomes defense-wise. It's either that, or just the weaker he becomes, the stronger he gets. He is a rather magical individual, mind you, so it would, I wouldn't, you know, pull it past it. Now, as you just saw, it has gone down to single digits. Now, this is the reason why I bought so many arrows, in fact. Because I knew it would go down to single digits, and I don't think it would decrease any lower than eight. Actually, it's better than if I had an unupgraded bow, which would probably be, like, two damage. But luckily, we got 200 arrows of eight. We can do a total of 800 damage to him. Now, I just hope that, in fact, those... Oh, I think it's three, no, oh, sorry, yeah, four and a half bars is in fact 800 damage. I can only hope. Oh. It's no longer actually affecting him, so let's go a little bit closer and do a little bit more. Let's just sidestep a bit, there we go. Now, are we actually going to hurt him anymore? Or do we have to get closer? I do not know. Um... Ah, we just have to get close to that all. Oh, I got really scared then. Really, really scared. I was like, uh-oh, it's not even working anymore. Why isn't the arrows piercing his knees? Can I just say, his bone structure must be, like, made of adamantium. I seriously, like, he must be Wolverine in disguise. Aside from the, well, supernatural healing capacity. But no one will be ever as cool as Deadpool, mind you. But still, I mean, seriously, this man is, like, he's taken, like, 60 giant harpoons to the knee. I mean, it takes the Skyrim joke to a whole new level. Moving ever so closer. The thing is, if you get too close, he will just aggro and just teleport again and start casting a multitude of spells. And that's something we do not wish to do. Not in the slightest. Now, we haven't got much to uh, damage him with. Well, I mean, he hasn't got much health. Not to damage him with, I mean, he hasn't got much health to really take off at the moment. He just got two more bars to go. Now, I would like to note as well that if you really want to not, you know, take, do maximum amount of damage to him as possible, what I mean by that is the closer you are with Great Bow, the more damage you're going to do, the best way to do that is, in ba is, is by, in fact, wielding the Ring of Fog, a very specific ring, which only being, can be get, uh, let me re-say all of that. It is a ring that you can only get from a Pacific Covenant, and I would advise anyone to go do that covenant for the ring, because the ring is truly, truly amazing, and you can get really close to him, 
and not aggro him in the slightest. What the Ring of Fog does is the Ring of Fog stops you from actually being seen. I think it's a Ring of Fog, isn't it? I don't know, actually. I think I might think of Dark Souls 2. But I know there's a ring that lowers the enemies from seeing you as much. I think it is. Or am I hallucinating? I think I might be hallucinating. It's one of the two. But either way, let's just shoot him. And here's the final arrow. To pierce his knee once and for all. Turns out, it, it didn't actually kill him. He's still got quite a bit left into him. Okay, Gwendolyn, you are a truly unique individual because your knee is the strongest substance known to mankind. Would you kindly just die now? Oh, heretic, swathed in dark, an eternal curse upon thee. The illusion is gone, and so is Gwendolyn. It took, how many arrows did it take? It took 100 arrows to pierce his knee. And I would like to note, there's a hundred of these giant harpoons the size of me that pierce his knee and kill him once and for all. That in itself is, dear God, what is wrong with your body? But that's what it takes to be a god, I guess. So all gods are just that hardy. They take that many harpoons to the knee. Now we're no longer doing that for the time being. We are going to go all the way down to here to what Gwyndling was guarding the entire time, which happens to be Lord Gwyn's grave. This is Lord Gwyn's grave. This is how big Lord Gwyn was. This entire grave was dedicated to him. As you can see, there's a few flowers on there floating. I can, yeah, there you go, floating. As you can see, there's nothing actually holding it in place. It's clearly flowers of the gods in one way, shape, or form. So here are three treasures that pe the three children have decided to dedicate to their father. Now, one of the treasures happens to be in this chest. So what's in this chest? Nothing. And in this chest happens to be something, which happens to be the Sunlight Miracle Blade, which was given by his firstborn. And this one happens to be... Brass helm, armor, gauntlets, and leggings. So maybe it wasn't given by each of his children. It's just more of a figure of speech, really. So we got the lady's armor and everything. And I believe you don't have to kill her to gain the armor. But I think you're going to have to fight her anyway, to be honest. So you have that. Now, the reason why it all of that is merely for one miracle in particular. That is a sunlight blade. A miracle wielded by Lord Gwyn's firstborn. The power of sunlight manifests... Is as lightning. It's very effective against dragons. When the eldest son was stripped of his defetic status, he left it upon his father's coffin, perhaps as a final farewell. It's very fitting. And we also got the brass armor. The brass armor is actually nothing special in the slightest. Let's have a quick look at it. The brass armor. So here we go. We have the helm of the Dark Moon Knightess, Keeper of Anolondo. Upon becoming undead, she fits the Dark Sun Gwendolyn at a museum at the Spiral Depths, and becoming a blade of the Dark Moon and assuming fire-keeping duty. She received this helm, which hides her hideous form and helps her hunt the guilty. And I believe all of this says the same thing. Yes, it does. So, it's quite decent armor. It really is. As you can see, for its weight, it is pretty decent. Nothing really unusual about it. Nothing special. They'll be like, I want this armor, aside from the hat that has a spike in the back. And plus, it's kind of got a dress like uh, torso, chest piece type thing, which is quite nice. It's quite formal armor, I must admit. I want to check actually what is the brass leggings like? Now, where is the brass leggings? Where would they be? Would they be all the way up here? Now, here they are. How would they look on me? They are a bit too dark for my nature, so we'll stick with the ever so lovely stuff of the favor. I don't know why there's so many gold like armor pieces in this place. But we can just say it's a nice, happy place where people thrive and prospered. So we are now Mr. Fibbles, the God Slayer. We killed two gods. Well, technically one was an illusion, but we can say we killed her. You know, it's everyone else that we ever come across. And, well, next video we will go item hunting. We will, in fact, carry on going after the Firekeeper souls and make our 
Well, alcohol, the strongest alcohol, make it from, well, lager into moonshine. So see you then, and take care of yourselves.